with presence in 29 African countries, 75 innovative risk solutions, over 100 years of experience. It all adds up to being the leading specialist insurer in Africa. Welcome. You are watching The Role of Insurance in the Economy. I am Fifi Peters. Today we are zeroing in on the construction and engineering insurance industry. We know infrastructure development is a key facilitator of economic growth. However, according to official statistics, South Africa's construction industry is in a recession and is uh, certainly struggling to turn the corner. Joining me to expand on some of the risks impacting the sector right now is the Chief Executive Officer of Mirabilis Engineering Underwriting Managers, uh, Kurt Mayer. Kurt, thanks so much for your time. I suppose let's start off with the South Africa, one of the most industrial uh, lies economy on the continent that is not doing a whole lot of industrialization yeah. as it does pertain to what we have seen in our recent past. The construction sector has been in a tough spot for uh, quite some time. Just uh, your state of things and how uh, you reckon the industry is. Yeah, thank you Fifi. Um, it has been tough. Um, we, we generalize and, and, and we, we only insure um, engineering insurance projects in South Africa and rest of Africa and the international markets. In South Africa, it's been extremely tough. Um, we've seen, um, especially after COVID, we've seen a couple of um, um, well-known contracting companies closing, closing their doors. And um, we've also seen, um, I think, the impact of load shedding, um, if, you, if you take that into the economy. Um, the global economy has had a huge impact on, on South Africa. Sure. And um, that that obviously a concern for us. Um, our business is predominantly in South Africa, and then we work through, as I said, rest of Africa and the international markets. There has been pockets of excellence, we call them, um, in different countries, and that's been keeping um, the, the, the industry going quite well. But South Africa as a whole, there is a struggle. Government has, has um, I think in the last budget in 2020, the last one, 2020, 2024 um, put aside um, a, f a substantial amount of about 159 billion uh, but we haven't seen that come through sure. we've seen it in small stages so it's quite difficult at the moment and um, and uh, we cross fingers and 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 hope that it will change <laughs> yeah yeah right. and uh, that uh, the sector will eventually turn I mean a lot of people who have been watching the construction sector have been hoping for the same thing for for the better part of the decade I mean after the activity that we saw in the lead up to the uh, 2010 uh, World Cup the sector many saw going just uh, one way and that was uh, uh, south so yeah. I just want to uh, talk about then the appetite for uh, insurance in this industry that has been contracting and that has mm -hmm. been under a bit of pressure what are things looking like there um, so, so we are fortunate in, in on the bigger projects, there, there are always lenders and financiers. And, and part of their requirement is that you require engineering insurance. Um, so we've seen that as an uptake. Um, we, we've seen that um, the private sector has done extremely well, bolstering um, infrastructure sometimes, and also doing uh, manufacturing plants and making sure that the, the economy is turning. And there's been a slight increase. Um, we've seen it in our, in our space. Um, Sometimes when you read in the newspaper, you don't see the activity going on behind the scenes. We've seen, um, we've had inquiries from across the world with regard to um, renewable energy pro projects taking place in South Africa, or going to take place in South Africa, where government is putting out not just tenders, but feelers to, to, to see what is the quickest um, manner in which they can actually relieve us from load shedding. And, and so, so there are glimmers of hope and uh, we continue pushing that. And, and as, a, as a business, we, we have to be optimistic. Mm -hmm. And um, the staff in the business, obviously, we've, we've, we're growing. Um, and people ask us, how are you growing? <laughs> it's, it's difficult. In an industry that's not. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to answer. But, but what we see is, for example, um, after COVID, a lot of, I would say, um, property developers took on um, office blocks and converted them into offices. And, and that 
started turning the, the economy a bit for us. Sure. And we've seen smaller, smaller contractors actually doing things at, at smaller um, manufacturing plants, um, solar coming in, in at your home. We, we see that happening. We see it then going from, from your house. We see the development going into shopping centers. Mm -hmm. And then we see it going into office parks. Um, so that's been helping. And, and uh, yeah, we appreciate uh, all the, the support we get to, to grow this business. Sure. Kurt, maybe just expand a little bit more on uh, your uh, product offering in the industry and sure. just uh, perhaps the kind of products that uh, you are seeing the biggest uptake in. Sure. So, so the, the, the two product lines that we see moving um, and, and, and increasing over time, um, specifically the contractor's all risk policy, um, and I'll explain that sure. and, and what it entails. And then we call it the, in South Africa, we call it the PAR plant, plant all risk policy. And um, overseas it's called the CPM, uh, contractors plant and machinery. Um, so those are the two lines that are really predominantly growing. Um, so the CAR, um, so if you insure or building something at your house, we'll take it from there. If, you, if you're doing construction, alterations, additions at your home, what we do is we offer you that product so that if you're building a new garage, we protect you in case there's a storm, there's a fire, there's an accident on site for material damage. And we then take that into account. And when there's a claim, we try and assist and, and bring you up to speed so that you can pr um, go on with the project quite mm. quickly. Um, that's the one. But that project or product you can take right through. Um, and you can start from, from a little house right through to a stadium, a hydro dam, um, an airport. And, and it's similar policies, but wider cover. And as you go, um, we build and, 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 and build a bespoke wording for you. Um, it has exclusions, obviously, like, yeah. like every um, contract has. But if it's done right from the beginning and, and the insured and the insurance broker um, shares the right information, then we do it right. We, we build this product that protects you in the event of a loss, which, which, is, which is the right thing. And, and that partnership is critical, especially in South Africa, where our insurance brokers are they really key to our business. Sure. So that's the main relationship we have. And then we take it from the insurance broker through to the insured itself, making sure that we get all the information at the right time to produce a product that protects them when, when, when in the event of a loss. Just in terms of outlook then and uh, where the uh, industry is going and the opportunities for uh, growth. I mean, you spoke about the fact that uh, what has been helpful in the short term is the repurposing of uh, certain building blocks that uh, have provided uh, revenue for companies such as your own. Uh, you did mention some of the current challenges, particularly as it does pertain to South Africa, where government has committed to spend uh, X, Y, Z on infrastructure development and perhaps that money is not coming into the economy as uh, quickly as most people would like. But I'd also like to talk to you about some of the other risks then to the picture. Risks related to climate, you mentioned the KZN floods. Mm. Risks related to uh, theft, I mean you mentioned uh, cable theft but I'd add to that uh, something like the uh, construction mafia as well being a, a hindrance maybe for, for the industry and its ability to grow. And even uh, those risks uh, that you highlighted around uh, load shedding and the power cuts. So, so how material is that for the outlook of your sector and ultimately the sustainability of the business right now? Correct. Um, it's difficult. Um, all those things that you mentioned, uh, it has a huge impact on, on, the, on the sustainability of insurance. Um, Climate change is real. Um, we've experienced it in the KZN floods. We've just recently had the Cape, Cape floods um, going on. And um, we've, we've also seen um, in KZN there, there was no damage, um, not, not as much damage as before, but, but there was also a storm that took place there. Um, so, so where South Africa in the past reinsurers, so we buy our, 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 our insurance from reinsurance via treaty, treaty reinsurance. And they've always looked at South Africa as, as, as quite a good investment with regard to no nat cat exposure, yeah. nat natural catastrophe exposure. And that's increased. And, and what, what that meant was, or for, for currently for the insureds, is that pricing is definitely going up. Mm -hmm. Limitations are being put in place. And um, even recently in Johannesburg, there were earthquakes. 
I don't know if you've seen that. <laughs> you yeah, felt no, a bit no. of shiver. Yeah. Probably in the st uh, in, in the studio. I'm not sure. But, <laughs> but, but well, it's um, still standing. The it building is, is still standing, well so that's done. a good thing. Well done. But um, it, it, it's difficult, and and as that progresses and changes, the 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 costing does increase. Yeah. And cover is taken away. Um, in some countries at the moment, um, there's talk about. Um, for example, in Australia, reinsurers were talking at one stage that there shouldn't be cover for flooding anymore because it's happening so, 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 so much. Um, but they pulled back, and I see that there's still cover. But, but you don't want to be in that situation. But you can't control it, right? We yeah. can't control the weather. I mean, from, from our perspective as, as business and leaders, but we can limit the exposure of our business to that. Yeah. And, and we need the insured to come on board with that, with us, and, 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 and walk with us through that journey, which is difficult, we understand, but yeah. You, you're obviously not the only player in uh, town, and uh, I'd just like to understand in this uh, environment whereby you have got fewer projects, you've got a whole lot of headwinds there, you've got uh, pressures on uh, pricing, uh, uh, what is competition looking like, and uh, are there incidences of opportunistic pricing just to ensure that you, you get some business in? Correct. Um, that's a very good question. So, so competition will always be there, as you know. Um, we, we, we are the biggest and the largest. And we say that humbly because it, it <laughs> took a long process to get to, to where we are. We started in 2006 and built the business very gradually and very professionally. Um, to answer your question a bit is that from, from our staff complement, we, we, we really try and push our training and our skills um, through to, to, to all our underwriters and, 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 and pass on our knowledge um, believe it or not, I've been in the industry for quite a while. <laughs> but uh, what's a while? Uh, no, I don't <laughs> let's not talk about that now. But and 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 I've and I've worked with great great underwriters and and learned from everyone. And we passing that knowledge on. So so we look at the competitors; they are there. But we have to always make sure that we we in in the in in the words of Santam, offer insurance good and proper. And and that's what we do. Um, we look at ourselves inwardly and we produce a product that, that um, the clients need and want, and when they need it, we come to the party. But um, the problem is with new entrants coming into the market, in, into a market that, that is relatively, as you know, as you started the conversation, it's difficult to be in this industry. And their only competitive advantage is price. Mm -hmm. And it does hurt the market. But luckily, as a market leader, we can afford not to follow those, sure. those pricing models and put our own, own pricing models in and sometimes walk away from risk. Um, we might not have a crystal ball to say what the future looks like, but uh, from an underwriting perspective, you, you know what the right thing is and the wrong thing is. Okay. So, so we always try and do the right thing as a team. Yeah. Kurt, we'll leave it there. Uh, thanks Thank so much for joining us in the studio, just to providing those uh, insights uh, for us as it does pertain to insurance right now and what it is looking like in the engineering and the construction sector. And that is how we uh, wrap up the end of this episode. Thank you to uh, Kurt Mayer. He is the CEO at Mirabilis Engineering Underwriting Managers. And from myself, Ufie Peters, it's goodbye for now. With presence in 29 African countries, 75 innovative risk solutions, over 100 years of experience, it all adds up to being the leading specialist insurer in Africa.